Hello and welcome to Spirit Forest. I am no longer in Colorado right now. I am in New Mexico. I'm a traveling girl lately. I'm traveling a lot so I'm taking you guys along and I hope you enjoy that. Um, I am visiting my aunt right now and I want you to meet her and uh, we'll just kind of chat with my aunt a little bit. Just get to know another member of my family. It is really bright here in New Mexico and there isn't a cloud in the sky so I'm gonna have to use these because it's it's pretty hard but I want to show you her house isn't that beautiful and I want to talk a little bit about it because it is very unique to this area this is called an adobe home and it's very unique to um, the New Mexico area and I might have heard talk about it as well because I feel that she can offer you um, a lot of insights regarding the adobe, how they did it long time ago. Uh, this is um, obviously built with concrete, but how they used to do it long time ago is they, they did it with mud. And I'm going to look for a place to sit down and we're going to chat before we, we walk inside to, um, for you to meet my aunt. So let's, let's find a shady spot to sit. I found a little partially shaded spot here right in front of her house so you could see it but I'm gonna take I'm gonna put some clips in I'm gonna walk around take some photos and some video of her house and uh, you can kind of see what it looks like because it is so beautiful it means a lot this house means a lot because it was designed by my aunt and my grandpa yeah my grandpa was a very well-known architect and he it's it's really interesting because when I go into the house I can feel my grandpa you know and I can feel his design in there in fact it looks a lot like the house that he lived in in Los Angeles and uh, so when I go in there I'm like this is my grandpa's house <laughs> you know and it just it has a signature on it and I think it's just it's it's awesome it's a beautiful house and, and I'm going to show you the inside here shortly um, but again he was a very well-known architect and uh, they worked on this project together and I have a lot of respect for her for you know doing this taking the initiative coming out um, and purchasing she has a 1.01 acres I think is what she told me and she, they built this house from scratch. They hired contractors and such, but um, I remember her going through magazines and magazines and clipping out um, little articles about what kind of sink she wants and what kind of countertop she wants and always dreaming myself that maybe one day I'll be able to build my own custom home um, the way that I want it. And, um, and she did it and I have a lot of respect for her. Out of all the family members I have, I feel that my aunt is the one that I connect with the most. And I have a very small family, and I don't think you know that, but there's only like five of us. So when we have a family reunion, <laughs> it's like we could all fit at the dinner table. <laughs> I love being part of this family of very strong women. We have a lot of women that um, are in the family. Um, and very independent women. Uh, my mom is very independent. My sister is very independent. And as you guys know, I'm very independent as, and so is my aunt. My aunt um, comes back from the, the hippie days. You know, I could totally see her all dressed up in all the hip, hippie gear and stuff. And she still kind of has that little feel to her as well. I stayed the night here last night and I kept all the windows open and it was just silent. And you know what, it reminded me of Spirit Forest. And I was like, I could see why she built here. I remember when she first bought this land and you know, I was young, I was in either late teens or early 20s. And I came out here and I was like, really? Like, you're gonna build here? <laughs> there, There's nothing here. And she, and now I, I totally get it. I completely understand. So there's a part of me is like, I feel bad for thinking that way because I totally get it. And guess what? I want to do the same thing. I want to build, build out and maybe not the high deserts of um, New Mexico, but I want to build on some land that is a little bit more remote so that I can feel... I don't know, I, I think I like that feeling of isolation a little bit, 
you know, and not having to constantly hear people and constantly hear kids screaming and yelling and stuff. And I get that. And there's a big part of me that understands why she's, why she's living out here. The great part of designing your own home is that you could really do anything you wanted to. Um, and I'm talking about those custom homes. And this is fully custom and fully my aunt. Uh, when I walk in, she designs her home, the inside of her home, like a museum. She travels the world. And every time she goes somewhere, she picks up another little knickknack here and there. And she has a lot of stuff. She has a lot of stuff, but she has organized it so nicely in her house to show it off to visitors. Okay, let's go meet one of my favorite people in the world, my Aunt Billy. I'm Billy, Tammy's aunt, and I live in New Mexico. Um, my husband and I moved to New Mexico from Chicago back in 1979, uh, after the blizzard of 79. And we were both uh, psychologists, uh, ther psychotherapists, and we worked um, with the schools. We also had a private practice and I personally am an animal person, uh, a travel person, um, and I'm an outdoor person, but not like Tammy, <laughs> where she's out there all the time in cold weather. I'm a fair weather skier. Uh, at 80, I'm not skiing anymore, but I skied for a lot of years. Uh, I was a surfer, um, water surfer, and um, a hippie back in the days? And a, Oh gosh, yes. <laughs> in high school, well I was a greaser. I don't know, some of you are probably not old enough to know the greasers, but we greased our hair back and the duck tails and the shirt collar up. And, um, and then I was a beatnik, kind of on the edge of hippie, and then a hippie, and then just a rebel without a cause. <laughs> And um, I viewed myself that way because I, if mostly my mother wanted me to go up, I went down. And I just was a rebel without a cause. Um, but I have loved what I've done. I loved the psychotherapy. I loved helping people. I don't do it for money anymore, but I do a lot of pro bono or free work at uh, through the church. Uh, I have a dog that I got for my husband who died with Alzheimer's and she is a therapy dog and I take her to various organizations with Alzheimer's uh, or autism and um, she's a great therapy dog. I'm looking at this camera and it's a Canon camera. She also <laughs> works at the Canon Tech Center <laughs> to talk with the people who are calling because they're frustrated with cameras or printers. <laughs> and then they need to come and pet the dog. How oh, funny. I like that. My husband and I moved to New Mexico from Chicago after the blizzard of 79 in Chicago. We didn't have our car out of the garage for six weeks because there was so much, so much snow in the alley that we couldn't even get the garage door open. So we decided to come to the Southwest and we lived in a house that had been built for a while. And then we decided we'd like to have a house that we helped design. And my dad, uh, Tammy's grandpa, was an architect and he designed this house and he loved the Southwest, he loved the Santa Fe style, 
and um, he designed the house the way we wanted it, similar to the house that he had in, in, uh, on the West Coast, but this is real homey for us. We wanted a lot of wall space because we have a lot of art. And um, it ended up kind of like a museum. Now I'm 80 years old and I'm not ready to part with anything. And my dad, Tammy's grandpa, lived to be um, 96, very alert, still designing things. Um, and I wanted wall space. So as she might take pictures around the house, you'll see, maybe it looks kind of cluttered to some of you. <laughs> I like to think of it as a museum of memories. Organized uh, clutter. <laughs> organized clutter, yeah. yes. And um, we traveled a lot. Uh, my husband and I and, and my parents had traveled a lot. So kept that up and we had lived in England. I lived in Japan. My dad had lived in Africa. He had lived in, um, Oh gosh, a lot of different places. Um, but we'll show you a map at some point that has all the places that my husband and I traveled after retirement. Um, the things we have in the house, um, I think show well. Uh, you'll see lots of different colors of walls, which not everybody has, but um, we, we vary colors and uh, love the Southwest art, but love the art of all over the world. And having grown up in a family that was Norwegian and Swedish, um, have a lot of Norwegian things. Um, I particularly like the art of Norway, I, my dad and I in 1955 went and visited up in Braskarid Foss up north. We visited one of my dad's great uncles or great great uncles and um, heard more about our, our family tree. And this man who was in his 90s then knitted me a beautiful Norwegian sweater and when I went off to college a couple of years later, uh, I took my Norwegian ski sweater with me, with my the um, animals around here. And I, in telling this story to you and to Tammy, I realized I haven't seen that sweater in a couple of years. And it's got to be around here somewhere <laughs> in mothballs. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Bross Reed Floss area. That's exciting. I'm going to go visit. <laughs> A tiny, tiny town. Yeah, yeah. One taxi. One taxi. One Uber. <laughs> <laughs> well, now there may be an Uber. Yeah. Also. I love the Norwegian art. Uh, and I love much of the Norwegian food. Ludafisk is not my favorite. <laughs> and growing up, Every Christmas, Christmas Eve, mm -hmm. uh, three families that were Norwegian and Swedish got together and we had lutefisk and lefse and meatballs for those of us that didn't like lutefisk. Um, and I, every December I make lefse and I invite friends and especially young friends to come in and, and work with me and I have my uh, Norwegian painted stick to turn the left saw. You look very pretty. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, I have known Tammy since before she was born. <laughs> and uh, she was a second child of my sister. And I was very close to all three of the children. But uh, Tammy and I have a, a special connection and she ended up graduating from the same university that I graduated from for undergraduate work. Um, Tammy, as a little kid, when I introduced her to my husband, who had not met her, and she was 
she was over a toddler, but not much. She was maybe three years old and they were out in California and we were from Chicago. So we went out to California and I'm introducing my husband, Dean, to Tammy and she came, she'd been running outside because she was always outside and she rang the front doorbell because she wanted to come in. So Dean answered the door and Tammy as a little girl was shaped a lot like a jelly bean <laughs> or a bean sort of curved like this and her little tummy came out and she had on this little, little two piece bathing suit and her belly button was showing. And my husband said, Tanny, I'm going to unbutton your belly button. And if I do, will your bottom fall off? <laughs> and Tammy went running full speed, <laughs> crying, around the house to the backyard. And it took her a few hours later that day to warm up to Dean, most of her hours, of course, outside. Um, Tammy, as a kid, horses outside, uh, animals outside, skiing outside, track outside in uh, the lower grades. She was a runner and uh, I remember in California, Dean and I going to a, a, a track meet with Tammy running and She's a lot like a, a young cat or a young dog. She didn't walk. She just leaned forward and ran. And she's <laughs> still out there climbing in the woods. And I worry about her. And I know she's got Rocky with her. And uh, she knows all sorts of safety things. But this girl, I'm amazed. I watched the videos. And uh, what is she doing out there? <laughs> in that terrible <laughs> cold weather, all by herself. That's beautiful. I'm sitting outside and she has little wind chimes. She's always had wind chimes, so whenever I hear wind chimes, I think of my aunt because she's always had wind chimes since since I've known her, which is my whole life. Um, isn't she just a beautiful person? And I wanted to introduce you guys to my aunt because she is, again, just another person in my life that is a a big part of my life and uh, and one of my favorite people. So I want to thank you for watching and I'm hoping to go for a hike tomorrow here in New Mexico. So check out um, the next video that post. Hopefully it's going to be a hike and um, I'll see you on the next video. Bye bye. Thanks for joining. The Southwest, the New Mexico architecture is very different from Chicago architecture. It's each part of the country has a distinctive architecture. And the homes in the neighborhood that I'm in, um, they're not made of adobe, but they are adobe looking. And adobe is made from the soil that we have here, which is very reddish in color or rust in color, and it packs well to make brick-like um, material. And the roofs on the houses, most of the houses in my neighborhood are flat. And they're slightly slanted toward one side of the building. And then they have what's called a canale. And it's a little canal that goes off the, the roof and it shoots water out onto the grass or onto the mud or uh, onto the gravel, whatever we might have. Um, 
up in Taos, which is one of the communities, uh, many Native Americans live in the Taos area, they get much more snow. And while the Taos Pueblo has flat roof houses like mine, the many houses are pitch roof, traditional pitch roof, and they might even be made of metal so that they can shed the snow easily. Um, the adobe houses, traditionally, they, in the old days, a, century, a couple centuries ago, they did not dig down to put a foundation. They would lay a foundation of these adobe blocks that are about 33 pounds. They're about this thick by this and by this, by about 11 by 15. And um, they would stack them flat and they would go about six feet wide. I know you'll may, some of you may have to translate that, but six feet wide and up about, oh, a foot and a half. And then they would come in. Uh, so outside, they had a long bench, a banco, along the inside wall and the outside wall, which helped hold up the wall. And then they would stack, and the walls were traditionally mm, 13 inches thick. Uh, and what they, would, they what they do for the roof? Ah, they would. They had vigas that were the uh, beams that would go across. Well, I saw up up here on your balconies. You had like these. You have sticks, basically. It looks yes, like. Yes. Is it, it that's kind of what they've used? Uh, they would use more like um, they they would use a tree trunk that would be about this big around about nine inches and they would stretch those across first maybe every mm, five feet six feet but the they decided on the room size by the length of the tree trunk they could get. Oh. Because if, uh, if they could only get six foot tree trunks, yeah. then that was the structure of their roof. Then they would put these uh, uh, fatter sticks, or just sticks, above that and put them together. Above that, they put grass and weeds and dirt and more sticks and a lot of them leaked yeah most of them leaked and in the old homes they didn't they just had dirt floors and uh, when linoleum came in they would have linoleum but uh, now of course my house is not just sticks up there hmm. and though it, we've had leaking problems i had to get an actual roof and my new roof is like linoleum, like you might have in your kitchen. Oh, okay. Or your bathroom. And um, why did you why do you choose adobe out of just a regular? I wanted it to look southwesty, and this is the southwest look. And in the community that I'm living in, uh, we have covenants oh. that determine what is okay and what's not okay, and they don't want you to have a frame house. They don't want you to have a brick house or a stone house. They want all the houses to look pretty much, at least material-wise, uh, the same. And we chose a color outside, so as the water is running off, the rain is running off, the melting snow is running off our canales and splashing on the adobe ground and splashing up on the house, <laughs> it wouldn't be a different color. Okay. In fact, Tammy, you know my car is even adobe colored. <laughs> so if I'm going through a rainy season and the mud is splashing up, yeah. I don't have to wash my car as often yeah. as I would if it were white. <laughs> yes.